Welcome to What's New in Burbank. Oh, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's that time of year again for the mayor's tree lighting ceremony on the front steps of Burbank City Hall. It's a great event for the whole family, but especially for those who are big fans of Santa and Mrs. Claus. In addition to the happy couple from the North Pole, RC Dance Center will be on hand along with the muses from John Burroughs High School and some special guests from Disneyland. Two, one, yay! It all happens on Saturday, December 2nd from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. on the front steps of Burbank City Hall at 275 East Olive Avenue. Ninety-seven-year-old Burbank resident Charles Johnson was honored by Mayor Will Rogers at a September Burbank City Council meeting for 30 years of service on two Burbank volunteer boards. Johnson first served starting in 1986 on the Public Service Board and after several years was appointed to the Board of Building and Fire Code Appeals. Johnson's background as a Lockheed manufacturing engineer is what helped land him that position. I spent over 50 years as a manufacturing engineer right over there in that little area south of the airport. In 1941, after graduating from the University of Iowa, Johnson was recruited by Lockheed and moved to Burbank. In 1944, he was drafted into the Army where he served as a lieutenant in Japan. A few years later, he served as an Army captain in Korea for two years. He's very proud of his military service and his 57-year career at Lockheed, a place, he likes to point out, played a role in America's success in World War II. So we cranked out almost 400 B-17s, and many are crediting that effort with a major part of winning the war over, over Japan. In 1958, Johnson purchased a lot in the Burbank Hills and built a home where he still lives today with his wife, Nancy. The City of Burbank Ponytail softball program just turned 60. The person who started it all, Barbara Round, is well into her 90s, but her memories are as vivid as ever. I thought, why not have a league like the boys do? And I said something about it, and one of the men said, and you'll be using all the facilities and we're full already. <laughs> but my boss was very cooperative and he believed, as I did, that women and girls should have a place to play. So we put an ad in the paper, of course, and uh, we came out and the first time we uh, advertised it, we had six teams which was an indication of the need right there. It's never been done before. The next year, we had 22 teams, and it just escalated from there. And nothing but fun, but we concentrated on good sportsmanship. Barbara is sitting in front of the Burbank Athletics Walk of Fame at George Isay Park. She was part of the first group of inductees in 2004. In 1957, founded, she founded the Burbank Ponytail Softball League, which was to become a national model for girls' fast-pitch softball programs. The first year, there were six teams. By 1980, when she left, almost 100 teams were participating. Congratulations, and unveil your very deserving star. When I first came to work for the Park and Recreation Department, there were no women's and girls sports, and there was not a, an actual bar a barrier to it, but nobody had ever thought of doing it. They were busy promoting the boys and the men and so forth. And being uh, an athlete myself, I wanted the girls to get in and be recognized, and I'm not sure what uh, year it was. They did the, the, the diamond in my name. And I often say I'm so glad they didn't wait till I died. 
because I've enjoyed it tremendously. And my four grandsons have played on my diamond. And you think that is no thrill, you know? <laughs> I'm Peter Masurlian, and this has been What's New in Burbank.